Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the 2016 Annual Meeting Part 1. For those of you who are visiting with us via streaming, we welcome you. If any of you are visiting with us and would like to receive an email message from me every Thursday about what is taking place in this room, we would love to have your name and address, all your contact information, and you can place those on green sheets that are on clipboards on the um, entrance table to my left. Um, let me call us to order and ask that you stand for opening prayer. God dwells in you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, source of all wisdom and understanding, be present with us who take counsel for the renewal and mission of this, your church. Teach us in all things to seek first your honor, your glory, your reign. Guide us to perceive what is right and grant us both the courage to pursue it and the grace to accomplish it through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Let me go ahead and announce our Change for Change um, Lenten program uh, right after I brag on the presence of all the members of the vestry, uh, those who are current, those who are retiring in two months, and also those who will be placed in the nomination for you. They are arrayed here on my left. Would you please welcome the vestry? And now I want to announce that the absolute best staff in the history of churches <laughs> is arrayed on my right, the staff of All Saints Church. Uh, because people have been asking, um, I do want to welcome Gary Hall and say that he is now officially retired. Uh, we sang the AARP official retirement <laughs> hymn in his honor uh, today, Let Flesh Retire, uh, was the, s the signal. And uh, we are thrilled that he has now <laughs> become one of our staff in residence. Gary Hall, please stand. Thank you very, very much. Great to have you. Let me say a word about change for change. These sheets are all over the campus, and uh, we have, as in the past years, focused, are focusing our attention on a need in the culture. In Lent's past, we have uh, gathered money for gun buyback programs. We've had uh, nets that save people's lives that we bought for villagers in Malawi. To this year, we're focusing on refugees and on our support of ref welcoming refugees into the United States borders. There's so much misinformation, poor information, delusional information about refugees that we wanted to take this opportunity to say, uh, to educate ourselves about the rigorous process through which refugees must go. Um, we have been asked by, and we said yes to, uh, an invitation from the um, from IRIS, which is our uh, refugee relocation um, service, and um, we said yes to them. And the Syrian refugee family we've been welcoming will be with us in a few minutes toward the end of our meeting, but. Uh, before they're here, I want to say that um, you can imagine what they must be going through getting acclimated to being citizens here, uh, including uh, the very tough economic challenges they face. And we are still looking for someone who could donate a car, um, and it has to be less than a certain value uh, so that they don't endanger their status here. And also, we want to come up under them in terms of some financial support. The father of this family 
uh, does have a part-time job, but it's not in his chosen profession in the business that he was in in Syria. And so uh, if any of you have any ideas about full-time employment, uh, Juliana, would you please stand? You can certainly see Juliana Serrano. She's the go-to person on that. And um, other people who have been so supportive will be in the room after a while, and we can recognize them as well. But please let me say that it's going to be very important. Um, our camera will be turned away, so those of you who are uh, viewing us via streaming, um, there will not be cameras on uh, their faces. We won't talk about their names, and we ask that you refrain from certainly any uh, uh, photos and certainly any posting on social media. And they will be with us at the end. Now, let's move quite uh, with some dispatch. We've got lots of, of things to transact, and a lot of it is going to be led by our senior warden, Kathy Kegg. Will you please warmly welcome her now? Good morning. So the only reason you get so much of me today is because Jason's off working, who's our junior warden. So he would actually be the person that would typically do the retiring vestry, and he sends his heartfelt love to all of you and apologizes for not being able to be with us today. So on his behalf, I'd like to acknowledge an extraordinary year for an extraordinary class. Um, I'm going to ask you each to stand as I'm talking about you, and then you can sit down. And then we can all applaud them at the end. Um, our first is Diana Carbajal Mejia. Diana had a very busy four years. She chaired CYF and remains a member of the committee. Diana serves on the altar as a lay Eucharist minister. She's a member of the Rector Search Committee, all the while raising a family and pursuing a career. Diana has always brought thoughtful and challenging questions to the table. Thank you, Diana. Steve. Steve Galton, who could not be with us today, is finishing his fifth year on vestry because he filled an unexpired term before standing for election. Steve has been crucial to the development and implementation of our lay counseling ministry, and he's been a very active member of the Pastoral Care Committee. Steve always kept us honest by pushing back on some of our meteor issues. Thank you to Steve Galton. Marianne Ryan, who is here, has served on the CYF committee and the giving committee. She co-chaired the phone campaign for giving. She has also served as a mentor for EFM and a reader for our church services. Marianne is often the first to volunteer to help and has prompted laughter and thought by leading icebreakers for our vestry staff conferences every year. Thank you, Marianne Ryan. <laughs> Mel Sariano, who is also not here, has, a, has had a very busy tenure on vestry. He chaired both pastoral care and con congregational development, not at the same time, and remains active on both committees. Mel is involved in the Labyrinth Committee, Taze Committee, Healing and Health Committee, and in his spare time, he's a greeter and a lay Eucharistic minister. His calm and thoughtful presence will be missed. Finally, our two youth members, who I don't think either one are here. Roland Christ is leaving for college in the fall. He's been involved with tra Transformational Journeys, I can't even read my own shorthand, retreats, the youth group, summer adventure counselor, and has completed Seekers. He knocked our socks off more than once with thoughtful observations and questions. He was a true asset to the vestry. As was Sophia Meyer Yen, who's also going to college in the fall, she has, she has been an active participant of our nominating committee. Sophia took her work on vestry very seriously, and it shows in the outcomes. Sophia also was active in youth group retreats as a seeker, summer adventure counselor, and serves as an acolyte. Both of our youth members are full members of vestry. Their wisdom is so enlightening for the vestry. We are, better, we are a better governance board because of their participation. We wish them well and hope they will come and visit often. Thank you very much. And now we move directly into the election of the new vestry members and Kathy again is going to serve us, please. So every year um, we elect eight people to the vestry, two youth members and six uh, adult members. And uh, we start working on this back in October. 
Um, we take it very, very seriously. You can see on your sheet of paper the people that served on the nominating committee. It's not just vestry members, but also other leaders in the church community who have seen people in action and know um, what kind of leaders we need in governance of the church. So after much work and prayerful time together, um, we came up with a stunning slate this year. Um, the first two I'm going to talk about are the youth members. Lorenzo Bacani is a sophomore at the LA County High School of Performing Arts, where, is he, where he is involved in basketball and water polo. Lorenzo plays saxophone in his own jazz band. Lorenzo has been at All Saints for eight years and is involved in choir, seekers, acolytes, youth fellowship group, and as a summer camp counselor. This is Lorenzo. Andy Braun had a medical emergency, so she's not with us today, um, but I still want you to know about her. She's an amazing young woman. Um, she's been at All, Andy's been at All Saints her entire life. Her parents, Dan Braun and Joan Goulding, met and were married here. Since fifth grade, Andy has been an acolyte and is now the captain of her team. She has participated in the, in the youth transformational journey to Mexico to work with the community there on a high school and an orphanage. A junior at LaSalle High School, she is an active volunteer at Huntington Hospital. Parents, please give Andy our love and prayers. Shelly DeLeon. Shel <laughs> Shelly and her husband Brian were married here at All Saints and have been attending for two and a half years. Shelly stepped into involvement and leadership immediately on the Giving Committee as an usher and with the 2030s ministry. Her community involvement includes the Junior League and the Brown Club of LA. Shelly recently left Caltech and has just begun a new position in development and planned giving for the LA Philharmonic. Shelly DeLeon. <laughs> Scott England. His wife, Jennifer Wyndham, and their children, Maddox and Lily Grace, I love that name, <laughs> have been at All Saints for five years. Scott is a partner and chief technology officer for the first quadrant, an investment manager in providing services to institutional clients worldwide. You have to talk to him about that. <laughs> he is currently a member of the Finance Committee and the Endowment Committee. Scott volunteers locally with the Urban Compass Guild and the Gooden Family Association. Scott English, England, thank you. <laughs> Tony Jackson was appointed to fill an open vestry seat in 2014 and is now being nominated for a full term. Tony, his wife Norwita, Norwita Milborn, excuse me, and daughter Sarah have been at All Saints for 15 years. Tony is the Vice President for Education at the Asia, Asia Society he serves on the Board of Trustees of the American Psychological Foundation and the Longview Foundation. Tony is currently serving on the Rector Search Committee. Tony Jackson. <laughs> Charlie Riley. Charlie's an investor entrepreneur, has been at All Saints for more than 10 years, this will be his second term on Vestry. He's been a senior warden, junior warden, a member of the Rector Search Committee, Finance and Building Committee. He's involved in our Homeless Memorial, the Greeting Ministry, and the Economic Justice Committee. And he has recently accepted the call to co-chair the Space Task Force, Charlie Riley. <laughs> Judy Van Vliet has been at All Saints for more than 20 years. As a registered nurse, she is the RN Director at Accredited Home Health Services. Judy's leadership includes the Latino Ministry Spanish Language Service Team, the, con the con Congregational Development Vestry Committee, has been a tireless member of the Transition Life Committee, and she is a founding member of the Greeters Team, Judy Van Vliet. And last but not least, only because of her last name, Trula Worthy Clayton.
is a retired LA County Probation Department Administrator. Chula has been at All Saints for 21 years and three generations of her family are members. In her retirement, she has served as a consultant to Children and Family Services, as an advisor to nonprofit agency, and as a Children's and Families Commissioner. This is her second term as a vestry member, having previously served as junior and senior warden. Trula has been involved in many ministries over the years and continues to be an usher, a leader in the foster care project, and transformational journeys. Trula serves on the Rector Search Committee and is our new Peace and Justice Chair. I'm exhausted just reading all of that. <laughs> Trula. You're not, you're nominated slate for 2016. Thank you very much. Thank you. I will receive that report as a nomination. We nominations do not need a second, but I'd like to see if anybody has any questions about the process. Uh, as Kathy appropriately said, it's long, it's arduous, it's very prayerful, and it's a great and enriching discernment process. And then we place on into the Saints Alive for appropriate numbers of weeks to uh, all of the slate to see if anybody has any nominations to add. We've not received any, so this is your slate. Are there any questions? All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Unanimously, you are elected. Welcome. <laughs> Lest you be so sensitive that you are upset that Kathy Kegg has not been recognized as a retiring member of the vestry. Um, I will be very, very happy to do that uh, two weeks from now when we reconvene for the second part of the annual meeting. And I will say things about Kathy that will <laughs> ins inspire and transform each one of you. I'm very, very excited to hear what she has to say about the state of the parish. Would you please welcome the senior warden to deliver her annual meeting address. Good morning and thank you very much. I'm talking too much so I, my mouth is all full of cotton right now. Um, I want to welcome all of you here to our first of two parts of the annual meeting and welcome all of you that are streaming around the world. We've become around the world now. Um, thank you for joining us. I want to start today with a few thank yous because I don't often get the opportunity to have a microphone all to myself. Um, I want to thank this incredible vestry. They have been so hardworking and so on the mark this past year have made my life much easier and hopefully has enriched our um, community. Um, it's an outstanding group of people and I'm honored to have been able to serve with them. I also want to thank my husband, Jim, who has been such a tremendous support during the countless hours and meetings that I've been attending in the last year. And not that I'm eager to stop being your senior warden, but we're, as soon as we're done here, we're going to the beach. Um, <laughs> and I'm so grateful for his ongoing encouragement and support. And of course, none of this would be possible without Ed Bacon, so I want to thank you for being such a tremendous support and leader and influence in my own personal life. So it's been quite a year at All Saints Church. Never a dull moment, always something new to do. And, oh, sorry. And that pretty much sums up the glory of God for me. <laughs> lots of work, lots of things to do. This past year has been rich with incredible speakers in the forum, dozens of ministries continuing to push the envelope to bring peace and justice and God's unconditional love always and to all people, including us. The pulpit continues to be a challenge and an inspiration. We also ended the year with a surplus and more pledgers than we've had since before the recession. Chris Caldwell, our finance chair, will go into much more detail about that in two weeks. And I think you've heard this little thing called the rector's retiring. <laughs> Ed told us 16 months ago that May 1st, 2016 would be his last Sunday. On the one hand, that seemed like eons away. On the other hand, we knew it would come all too soon. As is typical for us, we rolled up our sleeves and got to work. 
Dozens of people participate in focus groups to talk about who we are as a church community and what we're looking for in our new rector. Over 900 people filled out the survey to give us even more detail about what that looks like. And the national search began and continues. My confidence in our search committee is unparalleled. Last, our, our last vestry staff conference spent the weekend talking about transitions. From that work came the Transitional Life Committee, known as TLC. This committee is chaired by Nancy Necker and ably assisted with a very dynamic committee. They have brought us Grits and Grace mural that many of you have colored. They developed a book group based on William Bridges' book, Transitions. They are spearheading both the goodbye to Ed and the welcome to the next rector. Along the way, the awareness of what transition means and how it applies to our daily lives became a central point of the work. Yes, Ed is retiring. And our own lives have moved at the same time. Through the book group, so many people learn skills to help them with their own transitions, change of career, empty nesters, death of a parent, and so many others. Ed's retirement gave us all a chance to focus on our own lives in a new light. I looked up the word transition when I was working on this, on these remarks, and I was very interested with one of the things I found. F back in my days when I played flute, which is centuries ago, um, I forgot the other use of the word transition, a movement from one key to another, modulation. It's all one piece of movement, one piece of mu music, we're just changing keys. I love that. I feel so strongly about the faith and strength of this congregation. We are in a terrific place to welcome a new spiritual leader. It's very exciting. And I have to let you in on a little secret. I've known since I was called to be senior warden a year ago that I was going to have to address the congregation at the annual meeting. I always agonize when I have to speak publicly and I prepare myself along the way by taking a note of one experience or another. And I, and I do it, and it's fine. I know I'm no Barack Obama, and I know I have to really work on my remarks. <laughs> well, I've been fussing and been cranky about this for weeks. I didn't know what to say. I didn't have anything new to tell you that you didn't already know. I was just fussing. I was very tough to live with. So yesterday afternoon, it finally hit me. This was another milestone in Ed's year in Ed's last year and my final months as your senior warden. In my mind, if I ignored it, it wasn't gonna happen. Um, Kathy, it's gonna happen whether you talk to the <laughs> congregation or not. And I am truly thrilled that Ed can retire and Ed and Hope can spend lazy days with the grandchildren. I know there will be many adventures for them in the future, different kinds of adventures than they could have while Ed was our rector. Enjoy every minute and we will miss you. I've never been as involved in a church as I have been with this one. My faith, my relationship with the world and God is broader and deeper than when I first arrived 23 years ago. My leadership skills have been honed and my ever so slight tendency to be petty or irrational has been tempered by my work here with all of you and Ed Bacon. What an amazing journey, what an amazing man. Thank you. I think our guests have arrived, um, so we can signal that they can come on in, and while that's happening, if that's the case, um, let me bring you now to Roman numeral four, which is the election of the 2016 Diocesan Convention delegates. Uh, we had a change in church law, canonical law, several years back, requiring us to elect delegates to the Diocesan Convention while we are in annual meeting mode. So these are people who will next December go to Diocesan Convention for a very important one. At that convention, our new Bishop of the Diocese, the Bishop Coadjutor, will be elected. Also, we will be electing deputies to the General Convention, which is our national legislative body, 
as well as deal with any of the diocese's, diocese's um, annual business. So we've thought that it would really be important to um, get this particular group of people together to accompany our new rector at her or his first diocesan convention. And so with that in mind, we uh, place into nomination now the delegates and alternates that you see before you. And the antecedent of the pronoun we there is the vestry. They were elected there before their presentation to you here. Uh, before I call for a vote on that, are there any questions about that process? Okay, hearing none, I'm ready to receive your vote. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no, then that's unanimous as well. Thank you. Now, we're in the great shape of having time for questions and answers, which is always a challenge for us at annual meetings. And we certainly always want to have this kind of time. Um, and while we're waiting for our friends to come into the room, uh, let me field any questions that any of you have. And if I can't answer them, then we will uh, certainly send them to the right person. And the first question is coming, who, who's uh, monitoring the mics for me? Rick, okay, Rick, there, Lydia. Thank you, Lydia, just please, yeah, so that the video can hear you. I love you, Ed, but when does the search committee make its report? Yes, the search, <laughs> <laughs> So I'm hoping the search committee can make a report at our next, at our part two annual meeting. And uh, you can imagine that I'm in constant conversation about just that, not the persons they're looking at. Um, constantly, they were not ready to make a report today, but we are hopeful on March 6th. And I just want to remind everybody that in Christian theology, there are two different kinds of time, a chronological time, and the kairos time, or God time. Um, chronological time is what we expect according to the calendar, which God actually laughs at constantly. Um, <laughs> it's our artifice. And then uh, there's another word for it, pregnant time. And uh, that's when ha things happen when they're supposed to happen. So I promise you that um, it's gonna happen. It's gonna be uh, very, very transparent. And I can promise you that it's all going to be very, very exciting. And um, so stay tuned. I hope it's March 6th. Thanks for the question. There's another question over here, please, right here. Who's got, oh, yeah. Keep your hand up so he can see you, please. Thank you. I know this question might be answered on March 6th, but uh, will there be an interim rector or no? Um, at, according to our plans, there will be no interim, interim rector because uh, of our being beautifully staffed for that. And we're still hoping that we can do pretty much what happened between George Regas and Ed Bacon. And that is that the, the rector would be named uh, and be able to take the reins shortly after my last Sunday and be in the pulpit on homecoming Sunday, which is what I did. I came in, flew in uh, from time to time from Jackson, Mississippi, and conducted staff meetings and vestry meetings, and uh, we liked that uh, paradigm, and so we're um, striving to replicate that. Thank you, good question. Other questions? Please? Good morning. Um, what can you say to relieve our anxiety about uh, how All Saints is going to change when you leave? How All Saints will change when I leave? Um, I thank you very much. Um, <laughs> I have a couple of responses. Um, I absolutely am inspired by what Kathy Kegg said. Um, I really do think that uh, All Saints will be playing largely the same tune that it's played for more than 100 years. Um, there is remarkable continuity 
from rector to rector. And thank God we have the great gift of having uh, rectors who stay here at least 10 years, and in the cases of most of us, more than 20 years. And there's this remarkable consistency and harmony from rector to rector having to do with justice and peace and inclusion and trying to express the gospel in contemporary terms. Um, if you have not read the um, annual, I mean, I'm sorry, the parish profile, which is online and is available for anybody to read, and if you needed a hard copy, certainly see one of us and we can supply you with it and read that, I think you'll be gratified and inspired that this amazing search committee captured what we call the DNA or the brand of All Saints Church. And um, they are absolutely looking um, in a very careful way to find a person who can embody that. Having said that, I do want to say there will be a change in key. And it's going to be very, very important for all of us. And my wife and I will be a member of All Saints, will be members of All Saints Church, albeit in the diaspora, uh, living in Birmingham, Alabama. But there's so many people who are streaming right this second who are members of All Saints Church and who live elsewhere, but consider themselves All Saintsian. So Hope and I will be that, and I just fully expect that that's going to go on. The other remark I want to make, and I really appreciate your courage in asking a question having to do with anxiety. Um, I have been a student of anxiety and courage for a long, long time. And uh, I have come to, to, come to agree with Jesus. My. Um, LAUGHTER <laughs> Jesus just repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly said, do not be anxious. And anxiety obviously can keep us from functioning at our optimum level. I have discovered that anxiety is actually a waste of energy, and, but I now have something positive to say about it. Whenever you feel anxious, let that, and you're aware of the anxiety, let that be an invitation for you to pray because prayer energy makes a difference and changes things. And anxious energy just is wasted. So um, I'm, I have all the confidence in the world that we're going to have a great, 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 great rector and, um, and life will go forward in even more creative and audacious ways than ever before. Other questions? Thanks for that question. Yes, please, Juan. What's the first thing you want to do after May 1st? <laughs> Sleep late. <laughs> I, um, I have discovered as I've aged, uh, and I'm now 68. 68 is the new 80, by the way. Um, <laughs> Um, I, I've discovered that I really love to sleep later than I did, and I've noticed aging members of the finance committee who said, I don't want to come to 7 a.m. meetings anymore, and I, I'm rapidly finding myself in that category. Um, and uh, I have committed myself to my best friend and wife, um, Hope, that I'll spend all of May helping her pack. And uh, so I'm going to be very, very busy during May, uh, going through the really tough decision, as everybody knows who's ever moved. Um, we've got 21 years of stuff that we've accumulated in the house that we've lived in longer than any other house we've lived in. And there's much, much work to do. And she has a long memory of remembering how I left it all to her in past moves. <laughs> I didn't say she's a grudge holder. I just said she has a long memory. <laughs> And she likes to remind me of her memory. Uh, and it's her version of the story. Uh, having said all that, uh, and gotten that rant off my chest, um, <laughs> I'm going to uh, be a very, very good husband. I've got a 5,000 volume library that I have to sift through, and we're going to be giving on the lawn a lot of my books out of my library. And we're going to have a big book giveaway Sunday. And uh, then there's the matter, and that's at my 
hideaway secret study here on campus. And then we've got to deal with all the stuff that's at 540 Woodland. So that's the plan. Thanks for asking. Other question there? Good. Please, please, come in. Ah, salam alaikum. Welcome. Please come in. Thank you. I was looking at the wrong entrance. So let's acknowledge uh, Susan Long, who led in our friends. And she has been working very, very closely with Sabine Frisch, who is herself an immigrant from Syria and speaks Arabic and is going to translate for me. But I simply wanted you to see them and to uh, acknowledge all of the great work that Susan and Sabine have done. Would you first do that, and then we'll proceed. So a little message to our newest friends, and Sabine will translate. Welcome, we love you. <laughs> and um, we want our relationship with you to continue and not to stop. We will stay in touch with you and try not to crowd you or um, get in your way and be um, a support to you in your fulfilling all your dreams here in the United States. And we think your sons are very handsome. <laughs> the United Nation by its own. One was born in Syria, one in Jordan. The kids represent the United Nation. That's the joke in the family, because one was born in Syria, one was born in Jordan, and the last one was born in the United States. So. <laughs> Anything else we should say? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so uh, thank each of you. Um, I, I simply want to acknowledge how thrilling, thrilling, thrilling it was for us to get this call from IRIS, which is the Refugee Resettlement Agency, to ask us if we would be a welcoming parish and also uh, <laughs> to tell us that they needed the answer in four days <laughs> um, because this baby was on the way and we needed to get uh, her mother, to be here with an OBGYN uh, established as soon as possible. And in very quick huddles with the wardens and the executive committee of the vestry, there was response, this is a no-brainer. Absolutely, we're going to do that. And I can't tell you what that did to my heart in terms of swelling it with pride and gratitude. So thank all of you very, very much. So, I think that's and, it, right? And I know the family thanks each one of you, and they're very, very happy and blessed to have a wonderful church sponsor them. So, thank you from them to you. <laughs> they told me to say that. So, as we agreed, we're going to take time right now for them to go upstairs. 
And thank you again for being with us. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So you can go on there, and then we'll stay here for just a minute, and then we'll be able to end on time. So thank you, Sabine. So the father is a heating and air conditioning professional, and he had that business in Syria before they became refugees and were in a refugee camp for almost two years in Jordan, um, which has, as you know, one of the largest refugee camps in all of the world. And um, so he's working outside that area right now and is looking, he, you know, that's his heart's desire. So if any of you know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who um, might have a uh, job, certainly language is an issue for them. They all are in English as a second language classes, so they are working very, very hard, but um, that's not such an easy translation from Arabic to English. So um, all of the work is going on um, just in a wonderfully intense way. <laughs> And they need a lot of love and a lot of help and a lot of support, uh, a lot of prayer. So please uh, spread the word about Change for Change. Uh, just we, we don't need to overwhelm them with a lot of money. That's not the point. But the point is for all of us, including our children and grandchildren, to be involved in supporting them. Um, IRIS, which is the name of the resettlement agency, will um, not endanger their financial picture. Um, by there being too much money. So we don't have anything to worry about as long as we give and we uh, stay in support. So with all of that, what an enriching, enriching day. Uh, we stand adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>